Hello and welcome back to my channel and welcome to my channel if you're new here I'm Johan and today we're going to be looking at Married at First Sight Australia so if you like this type of thing stick around this is going to be a bit of a reaction and a bit of lessons learned don't forget to give this video a like if you like this type of video so I'm going to be looking at three of the couples that were involved in the Married at First Sight Australia if you don't know Married at First Sight is where you get a group of experts these three experts link you up with somebody not link you up kind of put you with somebody based on science of somebody who's going to suit you and you meet them at the altar, you haven't seen them before and then you're expected to live with each other for about two months I think it is in total and then you decide whether you want to commit to each other and you can leave across the process if it's just not working out. So I'm going to look at three couples because this year was absolutely explosive, the producers know exactly what they're doing and they put together some couples that I don't think suited at all so they're obviously there for entertainment and this is entertainment but it also is people's real lives and some of the things that I saw and some of the behaviours displayed I think it's just worth a little bit of analysis I'm not a psychologist or anything like that but I just wanted to give my opinion and reaction on some of these behaviours and some of these warning signs I think that women and men can look out for when it comes to just general relationships. The first couple I'm going to look at is Ella and Mitchell and Ella and Mitchell are, she seems like such a lovely girl, I think she's about 27 and he's 26, I think he's, she's slightly older than him, she seems like just a, a dream girl really, really grounded, lovely family, beautiful soul, she just seemed like such a lovely person and I think that's actually her genuine personality because you could see in the way sometimes she stuck up for her friends well actually every time she stuck up for her friends and also always spoke up on what was true and what was right whenever there was accusations regardless of how she felt for people so if you haven't caught up on episode 27 which is the commitment ceremonies and that final part before the reunion there will be spoilers in this so if you haven't seen it then watch it it's on channel 4 channel 4 a few episodes behind but you can see some of the most recent episodes here on youtube if you just put it in the search engine we're going to watch a couple of clips together and i'm going to tell you my thoughts on ella and mitch and why mitch was never the person for her like where i'm i'm just concerned like i guess i do need more emotional support from you like i do i just don't feel like i'm going to be able to give it to you what it comes down to is if you really like someone, then you're gonna try. It doesn't matter how much I want it, I just can't, I just don't feel like I'm that person. So here on the sofa, this is as they're about to separate before they decide whether they wanna marry each other in the commitment ceremony. She says that she needs more emotional support from him. And along the way, actually in many different points he's kind of told her that he's not that kind of person he doesn't show emotion he's not built that way um, it's not something he could do but she's always insisted that she needs that reassurance and that if you really care about somebody you will do that you will go ahead and you will do that and there's another clip I'm just going to play you here as well from the dinner party where she also talks about I need some kind of affirmation that you care or that you know that like that I'm wanted to be here so let me play that clip too when you say like I don't want to be here and like I'd rather be doing this and that I can't help but think that it has something to do with me I'm not sure I'm probably being insecure maybe because you don't really hear me oh. here you can see that he's given her these signals earlier on that he's not somebody who can give her the confirmation that he wants and that it's in her head and very much turns it around as if it's her feeling like that and it's not what it, she should expect that kind of behavior from him for me that was a massive red flag earlier on and these signals are coming quite quite frequently throughout their relationship her mum pointed it out to her when they met as a family as well on the big screens in the cinema and this is just a case of he's just not that into you if you ask me because when you really care about somebody you, you do kind of go all in on on those aspects I have a really good friend and he I knew him in his 20s and he was very much like this when he had girlfriends that were just girlfriends that he was seeing or dating or whatever you want to call it he just he had this kind of attitude he didn't really show that much affection it was just a bit of a little bit of a hit it quit it mentality um it's okay for now and it will last a few weeks this is enjoyable this is fun for now but when he met his wife the person that he was going to marry 
it was like a full 180 on his behavior he was all in he treated her like a princess he had that emotional connection he wanted to be with her and he showed the affection before that he wasn't like that he was very much similar attitude to Mitch until he found the person that he wanted to marry and this is a big red flag women like all men that if you get in this cold the kind of behavior from somebody especially when it comes to things that are really important to you and to your values and that you need that kind of affection it's not necessarily being needy because I don't actually think she was being needy I think she was being truthful because if somebody says I don't want to be here you're going to assume and the whole and the whole thing is about being together you're going to assume it's, it's about you but he doesn't want to be with you I don't think she was being needy I think she was being true to herself and he kept continually batted it off as if it's well that's your problem that's your problem that's your problem yes in a way it is her problem but it's not a problem it's what she is expecting out of a relationship it's what she was committing to and not showing your partner affection any in any way shape or form and having these tantrums isn't love and he's just not into you that's a big sign he's just not into you because if he was it would be there and it would be effortless he wouldn't have to you wouldn't have to ask let's watch this next clip as well about when they do have a blow up it made me feel like everything was my fault and that i've done something for you to think you're not good enough i just want to go home now i'm over this If you can't handle it in here as a couple, mm. you're not going to make it outside in the real world. So when it gets a bit tough in here, if you want this relationship, suck it up. So here again, this is to me complete manipulation again. She has told him on the couch or she's told him various times that this is how it makes me feel. It makes me feel like I'm not good enough for you. And he's angry at her for having that feeling. And it's because he's given her that impression. And what he's done is he says, I'm done. I'm going to leave. I'm going to go. That fragility that you base relationships on, that if any kind of argument, any kind of um, doesn't go my way, that I'm just throwing it out and I'm going to walk out of a relationship, is also a massive red flag, especially when it's an intense relationship where it could lead to potential marriage or commitment like this. Because say, if you are in a relationship like this, you decide to buy a home together, is he going to just walk out? You have an argument, you have children. Is he just going to decide, I'm done, I'm walking out? There was no effort, there was no kind of accountability for the, his behaviour on his part for making her feel that way. And to me, that is a massive red flag. And a red flag that men, women, you should look out for. If somebody's willing just to get up and leave without really understanding your point of view in a situation, then that is a massive red flag. It's not worth the hassle going down the line when things do get more serious because somebody who can just devalue something in an instant like that and walk out it, it's going to cause you heartache later on and again it smells of he just wasn't that into you because he's willing just to walk away so at the final commitment ceremony when Ella decided that she was going to give him a go and yes I'm happy to commit to this relationship and he turned around and said I don't think I'm the person for you I'm sorry Ella but right now, I just can't give you the commitment I know that you want. I know this is, this is not what you want to hear. What I asked from you today is patience. But all I can be is honest, and this is how I feel. Wow on your own little spanner in the works. I'm not surprised. Making no decision. <laughs> For me, again, that was such a uh, manipulation. He didn't really give her a yes or a no. He said, I'm not ready now. Maybe in the future. I hate that. There's nothing worse than giving somebody hope who clearly is into you just make a decision and decide this isn't going to work. They live in two different areas. He wasn't willing to move from Queensland. He didn't want to go to Melbourne. So that's just, it wasn't going to happen geography wise. It just wasn't going to happen geographically. And he wasn't willing to make that sacrifice. Again, I think it's because he's stuck in his ways and he's not, he's not that into her. And 
that moment there when she said yes and he said no, I thought was absolutely heartbreaking. I would have, as a mother, I would have been really heartbroken for my child, but also felt the relief that she hadn't just, that this hadn't worked because it would have been a lifetime or weeks of just feeling more insecure, feeling down, like being kind of underline like being manipulated it just wasn't good at all I felt so sorry for her in that moment um again at, there were so many points or times in dinner parties um in their own one-to-one -one time where he's told her this is who I am and it's that old age saying if somebody tells you who they are believe them they're not gonna lie if somebody tells you I'm not affectionate I I'm, I'm not sure how I feel um well, then I'm not the person for you, then just believe them because that's what they're saying. And they're trying to cover it up by put, putting the onus back on that person. And that's it's just pure manipulation. So in that moment, I felt so sorry for Ella, but I think that she has showcased what a beautiful person that she is. She's a proper ally. She's a real friend. She sticks up for people. She speaks up when things are wrong. Um, and she's got loads of love to give and she it just seems like such a lovely person I think that she has showcased the whole of Australia what she's like and I don't think she'll find it difficult to find somebody to love her as much as she's got love to give because I think she's just she was my favorite person and it's a shame it ended like this for her, but I think it is a massive blessing in disguise. Real massive blessing in disguise. The next couple we're going to discuss are Tamara and Brent. Oh my gosh, this couple drove me absolutely mad. And purely for the fact that Tamara, I'm sorry, she's just... For me, she's one of the most horrible people I've seen on reality TV for a really long time. I actually don't watch reality TV. But out of all the series of uh, maths that I've watched, because this... I fell into um, Married at First Sight Australia by, I don't know, it just came up in my recommended on YouTube and for about three years ago. And since then, I have just like been, I, I absolutely, this is the only reality TV show that I actually really like and get invested in. But she's probably one of the worst characters that I've ever seen on one of these programs. She's so selfish, she's so judgmental and she's the person, sort of person that doesn't know that she's got a good thing because I think she's a clout chaser and she always is chasing for something better, for something shinier, something that she can show off and say, look at my partner, but not for... She's the sort of person that would marry the, the bad guy because he had luxury and money and a job but wouldn't really care about all the other stuff. So I just think she's just a horrible person. And I just want to talk about how she treated Brent in this relationship. So let's watch the commitment ceremony clip when he just gave it to her, because that's one of my favorite things I've seen in this whole series. Eventually, the inability to be kind destroyed us. And you never took responsibility for your part in our shitty fate. Time and time again, I would be the one coming back to you, trying to find some middle ground. No matter how hard I tried to mend things between us, it felt like you were only ever thinking about yourself. Tamara, after all we've been through together over the last few months, I finally have the clarity I've been lacking for so long now. I've seen the real you, the one who doesn't respect me or anyone around her. You don't have any real loyalty to anyone, and I realize you lack all the qualities I'm looking for in a partner. You are not God's gift to humanity, so stop looking down on everyone. I don't even know where you get the confidence to do so. So on that note, good luck, good riddance. So at the commitment ceremony, he decides to just tell her everything that he's been bottling up basically. And he's right. She has been difficult. She's been confrontational for no reason. She has not been understanding to him. She tells him that he's a waiter and basically telling him he's a nobody all the time. He berates him behind his back and to his face. She doesn't understand what a, a, what the hospitality, hospitality manager is. Like, you just have to be a little bit stupid if you don't know these things. I know it sounds really harsh. She doesn't even think that sea lions are real. Like, she's, I, I don't, the way she carries herself, I think was appalling. And it was a constant for me that, she was constantly saying to him that he's not good enough and trying to make him feel like he wasn't good enough. 
and Brent out of all the men was probably my favorite he he's a really handsome guy like he is he's I think he's really good looking I think he came across as one of the most decent out of all of them he didn't speak up enough for me at certain dinner parties especially when it came came to Dominica and stuff like that but he did eventually and he understood he started to understand what was going on but I felt really sorry for him he wasn't problematic um, he wasn't perfect, but I just thought that she cheated, treated him so appallingly that if that was my daughter, I'd be really upset that she would display herself like this on screen. The way she constantly went on about his line of work, he is earning, he is working, and whether he was a wait waiter or whether he owned the bars and restaurants, it was it really shouldn't matter. The fact that he is out there providing for himself and he's working and he has a place to live and all that kind of stuff I just think was completely wrong and I think she took the hospitality thing as lack of ambition and never really had a, a decent enough conversation with him to discuss okay so you're a hospitality manager maybe he wants to own a bar one day maybe he wants to own a chain of bars one day like there was no kind of investigation into what he actually wanted as a person it was just straight away she decided that this person wasn't good enough for me and I think that the fact that they were seen as one point a comeback couple I just think she wanted it for she's a I think she's a hundred percent clout chaser and the next clip I'm going to show you tells you everything about her personality okay let's, let's watch this good understanding I don't think I'm better than anybody else I just have confidence in who I am what Brent said to me is something I get told by insecure people all the time. The way that I'm happy with myself, I think it upsets other people. Oh, I know that the people who love me and care about me don't feel that way about me. They know the real me. Brent thinks he knows the real me, but he doesn't really. I don't need any more friends. I've got a lot of friends. So I don't feel like there's anything left. So this clip here, when she says, I get told about this all the time by insecure people, just tells, it just tells you who she is. It means that she is that kind of classic bully who just picks on people. She lied so many times at dinner parties. Um, she was all she. She was when they shared that picture of Dominica, her, that OnlyFans picture of Dominica, and they didn't see the wrong in it. She really was so judgmental, as if she was like a disgusting human being for having a photo, and she should feel ashamed of herself and all this kind of stuff. I'm, I am aware that it's reality TV, and they can clip and and changed the way people spoke but there were four sentences there where you could see that it was her speaking and that that bit at the end where she's like I'm comfortable with myself I have loads of friends I have she's protesting too much she knows that she is a mean person she's one of the mean girls she doesn't care that she's one of the mean girls it's got her far for as far as she's concerned and she's not changing for anyone it's really sad to see if I was her mum I would be taking her aside and saying look the way you've come across i'm pretty ashamed about how you've behaved and you need to take a really good look at yourself on changes that you need to make around people and their value and how you see people in society because that was awful everybody is on their own path when it comes to career and goals and all that kind of stuff and if you're not with somebody who's going to encourage you to, to be the best in your wherever you are or encourage you different new ways of thinking or in, an, in a kind way, then they're just not the person that you should be with. I don't think anybody deserves to have F, what they're providing being shoved in their face like that during a relationship. It's horrible, it's toxic, and yeah, I just needed to mention that about this couple because it is a massive red flag from the start when she initially, during the wedding day, was like, oh, you work in hospitality. That should have been a massive straight away from him. Like, no, judgmental not a nice person yeah should have moved on and the last couple how can I talk about maths and not talk about Olivia and Jackson Olivia is the Disney villain that nobody wanted I out of her and Tamara obviously Olivia is up here and Tamara is close behind she for me was the nastiest person ever she I think you can really tell with Olivia she's obviously been hurt in the past because I think she is one of those examples of hurt people hurt people and I think that she is just she's that person 
and the manipulation from Jackson, I cannot believe he said yes to her at the end. Like, I'm mind blown. So I wanna show you clips from his mum and his sister and the warning signs they gave him, which he decided to ignore. She doesn't move on very quickly. Yeah, yeah so she has, yeah. And that's what worries me is I don't wanna go into something where she doesn't get along well, with my friends again. And then she's gonna take it to heart and hold a grudge on them. It's worrying what might happen in the long run. You would have to choose between family or her. That's an alarm bell for me. Brought the kids up to pick your battles. Yeah, we don't hold grudges. Mm. If you've got an issue, it needs to be addressed, and not in a bad way or an angry way. That's going to be your biggest, I think, yeah. um, hurdle to overcome. I think it is oh, too. The they can see the same face. things that I'm Just seeing. See. There's definitely going to be a problem there. It's really sad. So his mum says that's an alarm bell for her, and 100% agree, because if you've got somebody who can't let things go because they're always going to be fights and some, she said that she held grudges she chopped up her friend's bridesmaid's dress the way she kept going for dominica and googled her and spread around photos and she's telling you again this is another example this girl is telling you who she is she likes to hold grudges she doesn't forget she just it's it, for her this is her mo this is how she operates and i could see the pain in his mum's face thinking please don't do it it's gonna this is a massive alarm bell for me because if it comes to choosing between family and her it's gonna get messy and if they're married it's gonna be even messier so I I, I hope this hasn't lasted beyond this we'll find out in the reunion but for me when you get married I've been married 11 years now and you will have fights or disagreements with brothers-in-laws or mother-in-laws and stuff and not major well I've, I've never had any kind of major anything but you do have disagreements with things and if you're going to sit there and hold a grudge against your mother-in-law or father-in-law or something around the small things because she makes grudges around just the small things as well you're not going to get very far you're gonna it's not going to work because especially if you have children if you're that person then it's not going to work if you're going to be with somebody like that. And she's already said that she doesn't have empathy and not having empathy means that you really can't see somebody's other, somebody else's perspective or how they might be feeling or going through a situation too. Not having empathy and saying that publicly is, for me, so scary. And if my son came home and he brought somebody who expressed this kind of personality, I would be so concerned. I'd be so concerned for his well-being, his mental well-being, and any well-being that my ch that of children or or anything like that afterwards, because I think she has the ability to be incredibly cruel and manipulative. And when children get involved and that kind of personality comes out, it's not healthy for the children or for the family. There's another clip I want to watch with you, and it's the one with his friends, because this one is just ugh, it's awful. <laughs> Um, well, we had a conversation this morning. So Jack took me to his gym. Sorry, I didn't mean to answer this too quickly, yeah, but no. it's, it's fresh in my mind. No, no. Uh, so he took me to his gym. It's not really my thing. So I used to be really, really, not really, really, but I used to be quite a chubby girl. I've had weight loss surgery. I don't like gym, especially like a big, like muscle head gym. Yeah. I hate it so much. Like I really, really, really hate it. So like, oh, like I want to fit in, but also like, the thought of it terrifies me and I feel like I'd be like really like have to but I didn't know I also didn't ask you to you, did. you didn't have you to did. do it you don't have you to did. come with me but you just need to know that that's a part of my life absolutely and... it's just it's just a lot of time to sacrifice together a couple of red flags came up about his commitment to the gym friend Tristan says a couple of red flags about his commitment to the gym a couple it's just so, it's like a bouquet of red flags and this guy's happy to take them. It's just, it's, it, it's ridiculous. So the gym, again, physical activity, we all know the links between physical activity and mental health and, and just having a healthy body. She's come from somewhere where she said she was overweight and she had weight loss surgery. So if she's come from that place where she obviously was deeply upset, it would have affected her mentally, her physical appearance. She must have been in a place where she felt she's going to go that step to go and get weight loss surgery because that's no small, that's no mean small feat. 
Getting weight loss surgery is a major thing. It can have so many complications. It's a life changing operation. If she can be in that place where she felt so low about her body that now she's saying to Jackson, I don't really want you going to the gym because there's a lot of time out of our relationship. How can you not, that's again, that lack of empathy. How can you not see that the correlation between him going to the gym and feeling good is so important to him as much as you losing weight and having weight loss surgery. Like, it's just so selfish. She's so selfish and she can't, because it, it's always from a me perspective with her, she can't see it from his point of view and how important it is for his his body, his health, and to also have time away from each other. Like, who wants to be with their partner 24 hours a day? It's, it's just, it's ridiculous, it's unrealistic, it's not healthy, and having separate interests, the gym or playing some sort of sport or something like that, is really important. You need that time away to decompress and to be around other people who are interested in the same thing. For me, this, this kind of statement, this kind of behaviour, it's just, it's awful. Let's go into the next clip as well, where she talks about him going out. But, but like, I don't want to be sitting at home, like twiddling my thumbs, waiting for him to come home. Like, oh, is he going to have dinner? Like, I'm not up for that. I signed on for a husband, a full-time husband, not two days a week. He's married. He's got to grow up and stop doing that sort of shit. It's, um, I didn't, yeah, he's, not some 20 year old frat boy. If he's willing to put that part of his life away to accommodate me and my feelings, um, that would be ideal. So he's willing to put that part of his life away to accommodate me and his, her feelings, that's what she, how she feels. Are you willing to do that on the other way around? Like, he's not a 20 year old frat boy. Going out and seeing your friends and spending time with your friends you should never be made uh, to feel guilty about. If you're spending a reasonable time with them obviously if you're out with them all the time and you're never home and there's no contact and there feels like there's no trust then that's an issue but literally being able to because he seems like he's obviously we don't know he seems like he's got a decent group of friends looking out for him they look concerned he looked really concerned in that moment he looked really embarrassed that she was behaving like this and she's saying i didn't sign up for this i signed up for a husband well do you know what that is what having a husband is. It is not owning somebody, he's not your property. It is having a relationship some, with somebody and you meet in the middle, but you do also come and go and spend time with other people as well. You can't get everything from one person. And having male friends is really important. And having friends in general is important because you need another group of people that you can you know, spend time with and be sociable with. This whole part around, I don't want to wait up, then don't wait up, have friends as well, go out, do things. And it was really telling when Dominica and Jack told them for their sort of challenge thing in the last week that they had to spend one night apart and she almost felt a bit because they think she has separation anxiety. And I'm not here to diagnose her. I don't know about that kind of thing, but it is, it's true to not be able to have a night away from somebody without feeling that overwhelming stress is just not healthy. And I think it says again, a lot more about her. I think she has obviously clearly been hurt in the past, whether it's to do with her weight or partners or comments and things like that. And that is why she behaves the way she does. It's not acceptable. She's not a child. I think the way she she's conducted herself and carried herself across this whole experiment has been absolutely disgusting. I, again, if I was her mum, I would just be, I, no, I, that would be not acceptable behaviour in, in my household. I just want to also add that his mum said that's not how I brought up my children. I like to just confront things, move on and not hold grudges. And I think there is a bit of aspects when you're picking your partner and choosing your partner about how you've both been brought up. Not everything is going to be aligned, but how you deal with conflict is definitely a value. It's a value that you both need to share because if one of you does deals with conflict one way and the other deals with it another way, you are going to be butting heads the whole time. So having an aligned way of how you deal with conflict, how you forgive and how you move on is really important because this is just going to come up again and again and again for them if they stay together as a couple. 
I really sincerely hope that Jackson sees a light and runs as far as he can and this doesn't go any further because this is this was really uncomfortable viewing. Anyway, I think I've said all I need to say about these couples. If you like this video, I can look at the other couples as well and give you some more insight on what I'm thinking. Let me know your thoughts if you've seen this. Let me know what your thoughts on those three. I'm really looking forward to the reunion. The reunion is on Sunday. I'm really, really looking forward to the reunion to see what's gone on behind closed doors because now they seem to have cameras everywhere and there's always this idea of people swapping partners and all that kind of thing. And there's some few rumours going around about people swapping partners. So I'm really interested to see what happens there. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I would love to know your thoughts on some of these behaviours, some of these red flags. Some, just, I'd love to know your thoughts because the, this is actually a really interesting thing to look at and analyse. And I really hope you've enjoyed this. I will see you in the next one. I'm almost at 100 subscribers. Thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody who has subscribed. I'm going to do a 100 subscriber giveaway and I will see you soon.